Polynomial Theory, Part 1. The theorems that we will demonstrate in this presentation are the following. The Remainder Theorem, the Factor Theorem, the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra, and the Complete Factorization Theorem. And these are theorems that are typically covered in a college algebra or pre-calculus course. The Remainder Theorem is stated below. If R is the remainder when a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus c, then r, that remainder, is equal to p of c. In other words, to determine the remainder of the division of a polynomial p of x divided by x minus c, we may simply evaluate the polynomial at the value c. So here's an example. Suppose we wish to determine the remainder when x cubed minus 4x squared plus 12x minus 16 is divided by x minus 4. According to the theorem, we only need to evaluate our polynomial at x equal 4. So we plug in the, the number into the polynomial, 4 to the third minus 4 times 4 squared plus 12 times 4 minus 16, and after that arithmetic is done, you get 32. So the remainder is 32. This avoids performing long or synthetic division to obtain the answer. Now, remember, this is a question that is simply asking what is the remainder when I make this uh, quotient. The factor theorem is also a popular theorem discussed in college algebra and pre-calculus courses, and its statement is given here as well. The number, say lowercase c, is a zero of the polynomial function y equal p of x if and only if x minus c is a factor of the polynomial p of x. So here we have two statements kind of embedded into one statement. The first one is, if x minus c is a factor of the polynomial, then x equals c is a zero. So if you can write a polynomial with x minus a number, then x equal that number has to be a zero of that polynomial. And if we already know that a value c is a zero of the polynomial, then x minus c is a factor of the polynomial. So if you know that you have a value c for a zero of a polynomial, you can immediately write x minus c as one of its factors. So here's an example. Let p of x equal x cubed minus 7x plus 6. Is p of 1 a zero of the polynomial? And if it is, determine the quotient after d dividing out this factor. So first thing we do is we plug 1 in to the polynomial, we do the arithmetic, and we get 0. So x equal 1 is in fact a 0. Since 1 is a 0, by the factor theorem, x minus 1 is a factor. So we may write x to the third minus 7x squared plus 6x as equal to x minus 1 times some other uh, polynomial q of x. Using synthetic division, we may determine the quotient q of x. So we set up our uh, synthetic division tableau, or table, perform the synthetic division, and remember the last digit represents the remainder, and the other digits represent the coefficients of the quotient. So the quotient would be x squared plus x minus 6. So that's the q of x polynomial. So here we have, by the factor theorem, uh, x cubed minus 7x plus 6 equal to x minus 1 times x squared plus x minus 6. If we continue to factor the polynomial, we have x squared plus x minus 6 can be rewritten as x plus 3 times x minus 2. Since x plus 3 is a factor, we may state by the factor theorem that x equal negative 3 is a solution. Can you determine the last solution? The fundamental theorem of algebra. It states that every polynomial, p of x, of degree n greater than or equal to 1, with complex coefficients has at least one complex 0. In other words, every polynomial has at least one solution. So you can no longer say that solutions to this polynomial do not exist. This statement here uh, states, and it has been proven, that every polynomial, so long as the degree is greater than or equal to 1, 
it has a solution in the complex number system. So given the polynomial p of x equal to negative i x cubed plus x squared plus x plus i, does this have solutions in the complex number system? And the answer is yes it does. The fundamental theorem of algebra suggests this polynomial indeed has a solution in the complex number system. It fits the definition of a polynomial with complex coefficients, therefore it has complex solutions. In fact, the solutions are root 2 over 2 times 1 minus i, negative root 2 over 2 times 1 minus i, and negative i. And these are the three solutions to this particular polynomial. Our second example asks if this function, x minus 1 divided by the square root of x plus 2, have solutions. And the answer is yes. x equal 1 is a solution to this function. But the fundamental theorem of algebra does not apply because this is not a polynomial. This is in fact a ratio of a polynomial with a radical function. So this does not uh, have the fundamental theorem of algebra apply because it doesn't fit the form of a polynomial. Our third example, does the following function have a solution in the complex number system? 1 over x, the simplest rational function. Uh, the answer is no, there are no solutions to this function, but the, again, the fundamental theorem of algebra does not apply because 1 over x is not a polynomial. The fundamental theorem of algebra specifically states that you have to have a polynomial whose degree is at least 1 in order to guarantee the existence of solutions. So if it's not a polynomial, you have no guarantee that it has solutions. And these two examples demonstrate that you can have solutions to non-polynomial functions and you may not have solutions to non-polynomial functions. But in either case, if it's not a polynomial, fundamental theorem of algebra does not apply. The complete factorization theorem. If a polynomial p of x has a degree greater than zero, then there exist complex numbers, a, c1, c2, all the way up to cn, with a not equal to zero, such that p of x equals a times the quantity x minus c1 times the quantity x minus c2, all the way up to the quantity x minus cn. In other words, all polynomials can be written as a product of linear factors. So now that we have uh, the means of finding solutions, we also have the means of factoring polynomials, and this is typically called the complete factorization theorem, or simply just factorization theorem. And here's an example. Find the complete factorization to this polynomial. p of x is equal to 3x to the fifth plus 24x cubed plus 48x. Since each term has an x on it, we may factor out an x. So we have x times the quantity 3x to the fourth plus 24x squared plus 48. Now each coefficient is also a multiple of 3, so we may also factor a 3 out from each of the term inside the parentheses. And this gives 3x times the quantity x to the fourth plus 8x squared plus 16. And according to the complete factorization theorem, we can still factor the expression in the parentheses. And to demonstrate this, I will use a substitution. I will replace all x squared quantities with u. And when we do that, we have u squared plus 8u plus 16. This is done to make it a little bit easier to see how this can be broken down. And this can be factored down into u plus 4, all of that squared. So we have the ability to factor this down into a uh, s smaller uh, factor. Undoing the substitution, uh, basically substituting x squared back into the expression wherever I see a u, gives 3x times the quantity x squared plus 4, all of that squared. But we're not done yet. The theorem suggests that the factors only have x to the first power on them. In other words, linear factors. We can keep going, so let's go ahead. Here we may use the sum of squares factoring for x squared plus 4. We know that x squared in our polynomial, we have x squared plus 4 with the second power. So we have 3x times x squared plus 4 times x squared plus 4. 
and by sum of squares factorization, each x squared plus 4 can be factored down into x plus 2y times x minus 2y, and that's what's done here. So here we have our factorization, and we have all linear factors for this factorization. Now to be strict and redundant in this case, we have the following final form in accordance to the theorem. We have 3 times the quantity x minus 0. This specifically states that 0 would be a solution to this particular polynomial. And then we have the products of x plus 2y, x minus 2y, and then x plus 2y and x minus 2y again. So in order to fit the form of the theorem precisely, you know, we can write it out like this. But again, I state that this is fairly redundant. Adding and subtracting 0 does not change a value. And because we have x plus 2y and x minus 2y repeated, normally we would write those with uh, powers on them. But we are following the guidelines of the theorem here, and we are writing everything out in accordance to that. Thank you for your time and attention.